The liability in snow and ice management is preventing slip and falls, preventing vehicular accidents. If we convert to this liquid form, will that increase our liability, yes or no? Hi, I'm Phil Sexton with WIT Advisors. Okay, so now we're at the point where we've really got to start having a discussion about how are we going to inspire this change or how are we going to you know, make this paradigm shift from business as usual, using solid salt to thinking about transitioning to this um, liquids methodology. So first and foremost, who is it we're trying to convince that this is a no-brainer? And I, and I think it first starts with us, you know, like ourselves. Do I really believe that this can work? Do I really believe that the same thing that's coming out of that nozzle is the same thing that was being broadcast by a, uh, a salt spreader? So that's number one. So number two is who are we doing this for? And that's our customers. And thinking about it from that standpoint, don't we really need to convince them before we're even enabled to, to practice a different way? So convincing them, convincing the property owners and the property managers the same thing that we have to convince ourselves that it's the same thing, just in a different form, that's important to state clearly and, and simply. So in order for us to convince ourselves and convince our customers, let's address what the barriers are. And, and the barriers really are, two, are in two primary categories. It's liability and perception. And so let's deal with liability first. What is, what is the liability really? The liability in snow and ice management is preventing slip and falls, preventing vehicular accidents. If we convert to this liquid form, will that increase our liability, yes or no? And the point blank answer that we've been able to, to ascertain from even the third party research is in many cases, properties that are utilizing a liquid methodology while preventing the bond, and again, that's the most important piece is the liquid is the most efficient tool to prevent the bond. We have seen results on sites that do it versus sites that don't do it, a 50% reduction in the, the amount of slip and fall incidents. So that said, that may not even be enough to convince people though. So the other thing that we have to think about is perception. And, and perception in this case is seeing the salt is a perceived level of service expectation that most properties have at this day and age. If I don't see the salt, that means that there's a greater chance that there's going to be a slippery condition, which is just absolutely false. However, again, perception's reality in this case. So we, we're going to need to address to the industry at large how we change that perception so that not seeing it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not working. There are a couple, there are a couple of ideas to think about. In a couple of cases, I've seen situations where tracking dye has been used. I don't always recommend that though, because that, that again can cause some other perceived issues as far as, is it gonna stain? Um, is it dangerous? If it's blue or red in color, does that mean that there's some other chemical in it? So you would have to be prepared to do that. The real trick really comes into communication. So sometimes communication can be done with signage. Sometimes communication can be done with a broad stakeholder engagement to say, hey, it's been done this way in the past, now we're gonna do it this way. Sometimes it's just plain old communication to say, understand that we're testing this new method and here's the results that we're, we're expecting to achieve. We'll keep you up to date. 